My friends, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like what you see, please click the subscribe button and click the notification bell. And if you think you're already subscribed, please check to make sure YouTube hasn't unsubscribed you without your permission. It happens every day. And if you really like what you see, please consider becoming a channel member or even leaving a super thanks donation to help keep us going. I promise to answer each and every one I receive. Thank you for watching, my friends, and now, on to the video. My friends, they say a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country. Doomcock is such a prophet, he and his Hollywood spies, who shout out truth in the wilderness, get attacked for it, and then are later proven to be right after all. Case in point, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, or Indy 5, as I call it for short. Folks, I was all over that story right from the start. I nailed that sucker, as was confirmed time and time again. It was my channel that broke the news they were planning to erase Indiana Jones from history by killing him in the past, erasing all of his exploits, and then having Phoebe Waller-Bridge replace him moving forward in time, becoming, de facto, Indiana Jones. That sensational leaked rumor stirred up such outrage, it forced the production to delay releasing the movie for over a year as they worked to change that ending, and many watching the finished product proclaimed at seeing this choppy time-traveling tale, Doomcock was right. And yet, as it turns out, Doomcock was right about more than simply that. No, my friends, I said all along that the budget for Indy 5 was a runaway train of fiscal fuckitude due to the massive reshoots, delays, and retooling. We all knew that Indy 5 lost money, but now Forbes has revealed in a new article new updated figures about how much Disney lost with Indy 5, and lo and behold, to quote Emperor Palpatine, Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen it. In short, Doomcock was right again. It happens with alarming frequency, Doomcock. You publish a rumor, other channels and haters and the mainstream media attack you and call you a liar, and then boom goes the dynamite. Turns out they have crow all over their faces, and you're vindicated once again. So let's get down to brass tacks, Doomcock. What does Forbes say about how badly Disney bombed with this particular cinematic travesty? Oh, Skull of Calderon, Forbes lays it all out in stark terms in an article titled, Indiana Jones whips up a $130 million loss for Disney. And in that article they state, quote, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny failed to cover its costs at the box office according to financial statements released on Friday, which show that Disney spent $134.2 million more on making the movie than it is understood to have received in ticket sales. The film, which was released in June last year, is famous for its dramatic train chase featuring a digitally de-aged Ford. It came at a cost, as the filings reveal, that $79 million was spent on post-production work in the year to the start of April 2023, bringing the movie's total budget to an eye-watering $387.2 million. It didn't translate into fortune and glory for the film. Data from industry analyst Box Office Mojo shows the Dial of Destiny grossed $384 million, just 49% of the takings of its prequel, <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Wait, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> You're saying the Dial of Destiny, Indiana Jones 5, did not make as much money as Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? Everyone knows Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull sucked the corn out of horse shit. Are you kidding me, dude? I am not kidding. Apparently, Crystal Skull made 51% more money than Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. That is just a... That's, that's, that's mind-blowing. It is mind-blowing, Harvey. The 2008 movie was the fourth film in the Indiana Jones franchise and also attracted fierce criticism 
which makes Dial of Destiny's performance all the more dismal. Although its box office is in a similar ballpark to the receipts of the first three Indiana Jones movies, they were all released in the 80s and far eclipsed Dial of Destiny's tally when adjusted for inflation. So, actually, this is the biggest loser of all the Indiana Jones movies, even counting Crystal Skull, which was abysmal. It seems, on paper, to have made a similar amount of money. However, adjusting for inflation, all of those older monies kicked its ass up and down Hollywood Boulevard. That is correct. <laughs> inflation is a bitch, and so is karma. And according to this article, it just gets worse, folks, when you consider how the business is run. Quote, Studios receive around half of theater takings, giving Disney an estimated $192 million from Dial of Destiny. Calculating whether this covered its production cost requires knowing how much Disney spent on the movie, which would usually be a closely guarded secret. Unquote. Ah, secrets. Secrets, my friends, are why we have Hollywood spies. It's why I have to report rumors on this channel, trying to get to the bottom of Hollywood secrets and pierce that veil. Naturally, at times, what we've heard is off base, but other times it's spot on. And it was mostly spot on all through the development of Indy 5. Well, we all knew that Indy 5 lost money, but as it turns out, the figures your Hollywood spies gave you about the budget were much closer to the actual losses being admitted here than what the mainstream media was saying all along. Despite everyone saying you were out of your mind, claiming Indy 5 cost as much as you did. Hey, anyone with a brain in their head, Harvey Cthulhu, knows that the mainstream media lies all the time. They either toe the party line or they're lazy and don't dig very deeply to get to the truth, Unlike my Hollywood spies who do everything they can to get to the bottom of these things as best they can. Case in point, the budget of Indy 5. On Thursday, July 6th, 2023, my Hollywood spies sent me the following update, quote, So we are being told that Indy didn't cost $300 million. The fact is it cost $413 million. That doesn't include ads. The growing number of sources claiming that all Disney movies are at a minimum $150 million over budget and D-plus shows are $75-plus million over budget, the fact that Lucasfilm was almost $3 billion over budget last year and is already over a billion over budget this year adds to what we've been told." Unquote. Ah, to paraphrase Helen Reddy, that ain't no way to make a profit, no way. These overages are much more in line with your reporting than that of the mainstream media at the time, which seemingly adds one more bit of evidence to support the notion that Disney did massive reshoots on Indy 5 following the rumors you leaked. Otherwise, where did all that money go? It certainly wasn't on the screen. Actually, most people could clearly see, regardless of any reporting or data, that Indy 5 had been re-edited and reshot over and over again just by watching the thing in theaters. It was a choppy, disjointed mess, clearly in line with plot snippets I had published as rumors over a year before the release. There was simply no denying it, and now thanks to Forbes, we can see that in the financial dimension as well, we were on the very ball that the MSM had dropped. And so you see, my friends, it is foolish to doubt Dictor Van Doomcock's integrity. I clearly label these stories as rumors because try as we might to get these snippets of information right, we can never guarantee that they're 100% correct, but as this situation proves, I get it right more often than wrong. And in this case, once again, Doomcock was right. From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, stay angry. Ha <laughs> ha
Ha, 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 ha,